Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. We are back out at the YouTube yacht site. We got several things going on in today's video. First thing, I want to go down and see if the drainage is running like it's supposed to. We're also going to get the rest of this stone spread and a little bit of miscellaneous cleanup. If everything goes well and if the shipper keeps their word, by the end of this video, we'll have another 16 bundles of block here ready to go. The first order was 10 bundles. This round, it's gonna be 16 bundles. But the main purpose of this video today, we're gonna to address a lot of your questions. We're just gonna throw it up in, a, I think, a nice, easy format. I'm gonna pop up a comment here to leave the name out of it. We'll pop up a comment that we've received on some of our YouTube Yacht videos and directly answer those questions. I think it'll be easier to show you in person with a YouTube Yacht itself or what state it's in currently to answer those questions than it would be to answer them directly in the comments. So that's the main purpose of this video. A few odds and ends and a lot of answers. Hopefully a lot of answers. First things first, we got to make it down this bobsled track of mud. See if we can get the tractor going. The goal, well, let me just do the work and then I'll show you. You guys saw we got the rest of that filled in, so that's great, looking good. And then we got uh, a little stone trail all the way. So I can stay out of the mud, I can back the side by side right down here. That were great. Keep me out of mud this spring and into summer, and well, anytime mud's around, I suppose it'll keep me out of it. And that'd be nice, we'll probably just leave it, honestly, maybe even dress it up a little bit more in the long run. So we have a little bit of access for side by side tractor, what have you, you know, to this side. We'll get the burn barrel 
moved over there because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So hopefully tomorrow we can get out and get some burning done and some cleanup work done over there. And then we can get to your guys' questions. That's going to be the perfect spot for that for now. You see there's the bow there. That's where you're at. But plenty of stuff right there to burn. Plenty of stuff right there to burn. Like we mentioned, we'll just kind of move our way around and slowly get everything cleaned up. You can see there's some piles up there. There's more up there. Question though, what do you guys think about this uh, persimmon tree? Seems to maybe have some issues. And I would hate to leave it with this. I feel like we should do something about it before this is built all the way up. You know, so if something does go haywire, it's not as catastrophic. What do you think? I would probably have to take it down. It has some lean towards the boat, but it's got a lot of canopy weight right there. I think we could probably swing it. I think we could. Well, we got that to look forward to in the future. I realize how handy this gravel walkway would would be but that is handy mud free oh look at that bud man you talk about lifesaver can you guys imagine we got a lot of rain like four inches of rain last night look clean stone underneath silt on top we would have had to hand dig all of that out and if it wasn't for having this stone on the inside, it would have shoved that whole wall in. Just in time, guys. We got that just in time. That is exactly why we did it. Foundation drain's flowing really well, too. Look at that. Some of it's finding its way under the pipe, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. Is there any coming out of the actual pipe itself? Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. Oh, my fabric fell back off. We'll have to scrape a little bit of that, but not bad. Yeah. That fabric all stayed folded up, so all the silt's on top of it. So we can just pull that back now. That saved us a lot of work. Man, did that save us a lot of work. Brought the cordless saw out. I ended up taking this canvas bag that we got from White Duck and uh, threw all my cordless saw stuff in it. Holds my saw, my batteries, and my chaps very comfortably. I mentioned I was gonna buy another one of these and I actually did, it's actually in this bag right here. Came in two days later, which was pretty daggone quick. I was very impressed with that anyway. Technically it's a firewood carrier, but it's a canvas bag. You can carry whatever you want in it. They've got a lot of stuff on their website. A lot of stuff. Canvas products mainly. But they have several different firewood carriers and tarps. But what they really have... I'm going to put a picture up here. A couple pictures. They have some of these canvas... I'm going to call them canvas cabins. And they look perfect, in my opinion, for the original YouTube yacht site. We could build a wooden platform, get one of these fancy things, and that could be Chelsea and I's primitive site for camping out on weekends with the kids. Whew. You talk about the dream. That would be awesome. But they've got some pretty cool stuff. I, I do recommend checking them out for sure. I used to have a piece of metal duct work to go in there and I couldn't find it this morning. That's all right. All right, so here's the deal. I'm gonna do a temporary fix or try to do a temporary fix for uh, what we got going on back there just to make sure that silt doesn't get over 
that fabric. And Chelsea's friend called, and they are going to do a last minute, real quick, mushroom hunting trip today. Which I don't blame, the weather is absolutely gorgeous. So, let's get this put together, and then I'll just have to meet you on another day for your questions. All right. So here's what we ended up with. I basically ended up just taking that geo fabric and turning it into a silt fence. You guys can see that. We got another two inches, almost close to it, two inches of rain last night. So this experienced some more heavy rain and it looks like it held up really well, honestly. There's a seam in the fabric right there. So I think some leached through that seam but digging that out versus digging the whole thing out, you know, I'll take her, bud. Now this side, same thing. There's a seam right there, so I think some leaked into the seam, but if all I have to dig out, dirty stone-wise, is right here, by golly, I'll take her. That sure as heck beats digging out this whole backside again. But no doubt about it, that is a temporary thing, and we are racing the clock on this one. Oh, and I just ripped my pants. Dag, gone it. That's okay. It's going to be a good day. Beautiful, sunshiny day. Weather's good. I got the iPad out here with me with some questions. Let's get them answered. First question, this one right here. The guy asked, I'm nervous about where to sit my iPad because everything's wet. Maybe I shouldn't have brought the iPad with me. We'll set it right there. You guys hold that for me? Thank you. Wants to know how many stories the cabin is going to be. Great question. So this is the bottom level. It's the hole. I guess you can consider it the basement or a walkout basement. There will be a door right here out a deck kind of in this area. It'll be another level. That level will have a kitchenette. Um, it will have a eating area back here with a large built-in booth where you can kind of gather and play games and eat and just do whatever you want to do. Just hang out. And then there will be a next level up which will be the wheelhouse and the wheelhouse will have the master bedroom quote unquote and a half bath and a walk out balcony that will look west over mogan ridge where you'll get to see the sunset which is really nice as far as the basement that corner there right there is a full bath be a pretty decent size one there'll be a, a spiral staircase right in the middle and then this will be open and kind of a kid zone I guess you could say it'll have a, a pull-out couch and some games and a TV and that kind of thing. So that's what we're looking at as far as layout and how many levels there are. Swipe. You should have cut some more trees down because it looked like you were having trouble getting the tractor through to finish up the stone. You're right. I was having trouble getting the tractor through. But as far as cutting more trees down, this is a really cool thing. I don't know if you guys know this, but it's really hard to buy a tree this size. Even that size, really, this little feller there, it's even hard to find a tree that size. Or this cedar that's right here. It's hard to find trees that size. We want this to look like it's been here for a while. It is a stern wheeler, which means it's going to kind of have an aged feel to it. We want it to look like it's been here for the age of the boat, if that makes sense. So as far as trees, we're trying to leave as many as possible. Obviously, we talked about that persimmon's going to have to come down. It's not very healthy, and you can see there's a couple dead ones. But it's a cabin in the woods. We want it to feel like it's in the woods. I think that makes sense. Next, when can I make a reservation? I don't know. I have no clue. We don't really have, I mean, we have a target date. We would love to be running out by this coming summer, whatever year that is, this coming summer, not this summer, but the next one. Okay, that would 
be our ideal target date. But again, we're building this out of YouTube revenue. So as we get the money, we're building with it. And if YouTube slows down or something slows down, then the construction slows down. Now, if the channel keeps growing, you guys keep telling all your friends and family about it, and the channel keeps growing and the revenue increases, and then we build faster. That's kind of how that works. But I really don't have a definite date on when we'll start accepting reservations. I do know this, we will definitely not start accepting reservations until it is 100% ready. I don't want that time crunch. I don't want that stress of, oh gosh, we got people coming in a month. We've got to get this stuff done. I don't want that. We're having fun with it. We're taking our time, we're enjoying it. And uh, yeah, there you go, there's that answer. Also, he says, on a hillside overlooking the river. So every now and then, we get this comment and I try to address it, but I just want to make it perfectly clear. If you come here looking to see the river from this itself, you're going to be disappointed. You can't see the river from here. You, you kind of can in the winter time. You can kind of see it through the trees, but it's not a really clear shot. Now, there is a riverfront park that is very close. There's Hoosier National Forest Ground that is along the river called Mano Point, which is gorgeous. And there's lots of places to take in the river in our little community here. But as far as seeing it from this, you're not really going to do that. Next, use the, oh, we get this one a lot. This one we get a lot, and this one I, I really wanna address. These rocks are absolutely gorgeous, they really are, but this style of rock, and this one's already started to do it, has a bad habit of delaminating just like that. They don't stay together. After a few, oh, come on. After a few freeze and thaw cycles, these just turn into gravel. I mean, they just, there you go. They delaminate really, really easily. And you can see all the cracks already starting to form on it. And that's probably 16 inches across. It's a really good size rock, but it just turns into nothing. And even after it delaminates, you know, if you're thinking you can make flagstone or something out of it, I mean, it's just, it's a very brittle rock. As far as anything structural, they're kind of useless. What we might do is a small retaining wall where we talked about this deck over here, maybe a small retaining wall, maybe some landscape border, that kind of thing. But anything structural as far as people walking on, it's just not a good idea. We've tried it, it never really worked out and I just don't want to risk it, especially with having guests coming in here. Don't want to take that risk. This is another great question. And yes, we will. Will we put a screen over the pipe to keep critters from getting in? Yeah, absolutely, we will. But what I did is, um, you can see this is the bell end, the perforated pipe adapter that went from the perforated pipe into this fit very, very snug on this end. On the bell end, it was very loose. So I just kind of flopped it around. And to be honest, I've just been lazy. I haven't cut the end off and put the screen cap on. But yeah, we do plan on doing that. It's a good idea. You don't want critters clogging up your drainage. It's just, it's never good. It's never good. This is probably one of the most common comments I get when I'm working out here. Why don't you get Mike's 304, the 120, the 140, the skid steer, you name a piece of equipment. People want to know why I'm not doing that. Wouldn't it be easier? Yeah, it would be way easier if I had Mike's equipment up here all the time. But we've talked about this before. Mike does this really crazy thing called run a business. And I can't call Mike and say, hey, you know how you're making a profit on that job? Yep, that's neat. I need that excavator so I can build a steamboat cabin in the woods. It just doesn't work like that. Also... He does charge me rental, don't get me wrong, it's a fair price, and most of you have figured out by now, but when I work for Mike, that's me trading my time for equipment rental time. That's just the agreement we've always had, and I use equipment enough that that works out really well for us. So it does cost me a little bit of time to use equipment, and if I can get it done with a little bit of extra struggle with the 755, well, I just enjoy that. Plus, I just enjoy watching that 755 work. It's a great tractor, does a great job. You're right, it would be much easier with the skid steer to get around here and get this stuff moved around. But hey, we got it done. The old run what you brung kind of thing. So this one I love. I love comments like this. It's kind of hard to get size and shape and dimension to show up on camera. But I agree 100%. We should have dug it out four feet to prevent this from happening. Oh, that's right. We did. Daggone it. We did. It is four feet through here. It's even more up through here. So I did overdig quite a bit more than I normally would if I was doing a basement, anticipating that something like this might happen. So we did do that. I agree with you 100%. Um, the only thing I would have done differently, the only thing I would have done differently and possibly might still do, is run a section of silt fence along the top of that bench all the way around. 
that might be the only thing I would have done different. This thing seems to be working well for now, honestly. Like I said, we got several more, I don't know, at least an inch and a half rain last night, and it held up fine to that. All right. Can you guys hear those airplanes? It's crazy. It's crazy, anyway. This is a great question. Lily is fantastic help. She always likes helping. If I ask her to help, she never fights about it. She says, sure, absolutely. Now, obviously she's at an age I can't have her come out and chainsaw stuff with me in the woods. Or I do have her run the tractor, but we're not gonna have her run the tractor when we're doing this, considering we were packing a tire most of the time. But put straps on the ICF, perfect opportunity to get out here and kind of hang out, spend some time together teach some basic skills like using a level and a tape measure and we had a really good time. My split personality has a, a little bit of, a, of an attitude problem if I'm gonna be honest about it. Did you say something? No, it's your fault. No, all, all good things. Bad attitude. Bad attitude. This, this is great. I always want to talk about this. He makes an excellent point and I'm glad he figured it out so that's awesome. Welcome to the channel by the way even though you've been with us for a while. Mike throw up like a analytic or something that kind of illustrates this. Last time I checked, I think it was around 35% of people viewing the channel. They're actually subscribed. The remainder are not. And it's an easy mistake to make to think that you're subscribed, uh, that you, but you're actually not. YouTube recognizes if you click on a channel a lot, it puts it in their algorithm. And every now and then, when that channel posts a new video, they may throw one your way in the suggested videos. You see them frequently enough that you make the assumption, I'm subscribed because I see these videos all the time. But that may not be the case and you may, may be missing out on some of the content. So double check, make sure you go to subscribe, make sure the bell is rung and you get all notifications so you don't miss any content from us. It's an easy mistake to make. I've made it myself with some of the channels I follow. You might just wanna double check and make sure you're actually subscribed so you don't miss anything else we have coming up. So this is a great question about the ICF itself, and let's just walk over here and I'll show you. This is kind of why I want to do this, because I can just kind of show you firsthand and in person. I've had a few people ask this question. We got the scrap block here. We'll get her opened up. This is one of our corners off the bow, I think. You guys balance there for just a second. Good job. Nice work, everybody. Oh, God. So, will the water make it out of the bottom of the form? There's your answer right there. That bottom course sits on these little tabs right here, which means there's a gap or a space between each one of them underneath the block. Now that's obviously plenty of room for water to get out. Now, there may still be some water on the footer, given if there's any, you know, variances, small variances in the footer. There may be a couple places that kind of puddle up, but that's no big deal either. Whenever we pour, We'll start the hose over here. We'll chase that water all the way around and it can push out anywhere along the way, obviously out into the foundation drain. But if there is any still in the walls, it pushes around. When it meets our first lift, it gets forced right underneath and out the foundation drain. No problem at all. No problem at all. Great question though. Excellent question. Yes, yes it will. Um, Probably be perfect for like a family of four or five or a romantic couples getaway, that kind of thing, but more than one person. The indoor plumbing, we're gonna do the indoor plumbing thing. And uh, no, no, and yeah, thanks. I, I, I appreciate that. And in regards to the whole indoor plumbing thing, all the plumbing will be right here. The half bath for the master bedroom up in the wheelhouse. I don't know if it's gonna be that high, but somewhere up in here, there's gonna be a toilet and uh, uh, well, a sink, I guess, would make it a half bath. And then there's gonna be a pipe that comes down out that back wall, kitchen sink right in here. Same thing, it's all gonna run pretty much down there. And then, the, like I said, full bath right here. So all the plumbing is stacked right here in this corner, which is why I didn't put anything there. And then it'll go out that wall. The septic tank will go pretty close to where that propane tank's sitting, right there. So this is one that Dirt Perfect and I talk about all the time. Uh, one, it's definitely in Florida. I promise you that. In fact, I've, I've seen it in Florida. When ICF first came to the States, it was very popular in the coastal regions for storm protection, primarily. Just Google Hurricane Katrina, ICF, or Hurricane Katrina, New Dura. One of the two, a photo will pop up and that's it, that says it all. You don't need to know anything else of why it's popular in coastal regions. It's amazing the amount of protection an ICF wall can give you 
compared to it, a 2x4 or 2x6 wall. As far as why we're using it, um, obviously as energy prices increased, it kind of started making its way to places uh, that were colder climates to try to save on that. So we use it one for the insulation value because we do get pretty cold here and two, just flat out strength. It's just a very strong wall. It's also very easy to make very cool shapes. You can be very creative with it. It's just an awesome product. It's everything you need. Here, look, amazing curved wall two and a half inches of insulation, six inches of concrete, two and a half inches of insulation, rebar on an 18 inch, every horizontal, 18 inch vertical, you have an 18 inch rebar grid. That's pretty insane, that's not very common. All your studs are built in, look. Everywhere there's a diamond, there's a stud. Inside, well, oh, that's the inside, and outside. It's everything you need, it's amazing. Rebar chairs built in it just snaps right in there somebody asked how come i'm not tying my rebar i don't have to it's there the only time i have to tie rebar is if a rebar schedule says we need extra for example a lintel above a door or something like that or when we get back here to the supports for the paddle wheel that's going to take a little bit of extra rebar and we'll have to get in there and get some tying done but as far as the majority of the courses it just snaps right in and you're good to go it's a great product, it really is. I'll just follow up with this question because it's pretty popular. How much is an ICF block? So for new Dura, I'm paying a contractor price. I'm getting a little bit of a break for a contractor price on it. 18 inch tall block, eight foot long, 46 bucks. There's three blocks in a bundle. So whatever 46 times three is, that's how much a bundle of straight block costs. And of course, add tax on top of that, any fuel surcharges if you're getting it shipped. Of course, you can always go pick it up somewhere as well. A lot of people might say that's expensive, but keep in mind, you're paying for quite a bit of insulation. You're also paying for your studs. You get amazing energy savings. You get a very strong wall and peace of mind. I don't know how to put a price on it. And with all that being said, another popular question we get is what's the price comparison between this and a two by four wall? I'm not even gonna give it to you. I'm not, you're not comparing the same things. You're asking for two different things. I will say this, difference wise, if, if you really wanna know the best way to say it, if you do this versus a traditionally framed wall, you're gonna be about 10% more overall building cost. Most of that is in the block itself. If you're gonna build a house that is comparable in strength and R value to the ICF, the ICF is gonna be cheaper. If you're gonna to try to frame a house to the R value and wall strength of this ICF, your ICF is gonna be way cheaper. And it's cheaper in the long run operation cost. I have people argue that with me all the time, but I live in an ICF home and I lived in a non-ICF home prior to that. I know what I paid then, I know what I pay now. It's way cheaper. It's way cheaper in the long run. It's just a great building material. I, I could go on forever about this, but that's not what this is. More questions, more questions, more questions. Are you gonna put a basement in it? Yes. Okay. That's good. That was so one question I did get, but I couldn't find the comment, is where will the braces sit since we put stone in there? Excellent question. And we have done this before. This is not a first time thing. Not the stone, but elevating the braces. This is what we just call an L strap. It's nothing fancy. It's just a two by four on the bottom and one on edge. It makes an L. You guys get, there's an L? I don't know if this reverses. It doesn't matter. You guys get it. We call it an L strap and the brace just sits right on top. It's enough to still catch the bottom course, which is the main thing. You want to always catch the bottom course. It's enough to catch the bottom course. And then of course the rest on the way up. So that's the plan that will go all the way around, at least on the straight walls. We'll have to come up with something on the curved walls, but that won't be any problem at all. We'll do another video like this in the future, addressing all the questions, addressing any concerns you might have. I like this. It's a lot easier for me to do this and just come out here and show you exactly firsthand what's going on than it is to sit there and try to explain it in the comment. It's just, it's a lot easier this way. At least I think it is. But kind of let me know what you think if you guys are into this. If you are, again, ask the questions. We'll get them answered on the next one. As far as what's to come on the channel, I said in this video we would hope to get the ICF delivered. We didn't. But that's not because it's not on time. That's because the video is actually finished earlier than I expected. Uh, the ICF is coming Thursday, which is when this video should be live. It's actually being delivered to Mike's yard and not uh, the job site in Kentucky. So all we have to do is drive down to Mike's lot, pick it up and bring it up here and hopefully maybe start stacking on Thursday. I'm pretty excited about that. That should be good. Really the only other thing I have for this video, we have a lot of new people on the channel, which is awesome. Welcome to the channel. We are all glad you're here. 
but I'm always trying to make each video a little bit better than the last so I could use your feedback. If you guys have suggestions of things you want to see, things you don't want to see, things you like or you don't like, let me know in the comments. I'm just kind of curious. Personally, I'm really happy with the way the channel's growing. I'm happy with the way everything is going. But, you know, I'd be kind of foolish not to ask the guys and gals that are actually watching it what you think. So let me know in the comments. I am curious. As always, you can reach out to me. My email is in the description. Of course, there's Instagram as well. I do have Facebook, but I really don't use it that much. Um, I probably won't see that message if you send it on Facebook. So Instagram or Gmail is probably the best. Or, of course, like we said, good old-fashioned comment. That's all we have for this one. Sunday will be a video working for Dirt Perfect, and then hopefully the following Thursday will be videos of stacking more ICF block. Fingers crossed. We're pretty excited about it. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. There you go.